Cool. Cool, man. Hello, Chris. You all right? Harry? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm doing good. How are you doing? Good, good, good. Yeah, um, good. So your band, Mean Man, you're going to play some UK dates. Um, when was the last yeah. time you the UK out of interest? It's what? When was the last time you played the UK? Oh, about uh, June, July, June, July, August, September, October. October. Oh, right. So not so long ago. Um, yeah. this was a, my first question is uh, obviously with this live set, you're going to include some, you know, lots of Wasp classics. But where we get some of the uh, wonderful material from your solo albums, like Shitting Bricks and Nothing to Lose, will, will they be represented as well? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I do a nine, I think it's nine or eight songs from each from Wasp. And, uh, um, because it, I just played the boat, it was an hour set, so it was cut short. But uh, I think I'm gonna do eight songs from Wasp and eight songs from my solo stuff, you know. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. unbearable influence and, and uh, shit and bricks, and then, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. I've got, I usually play with this band, this singer and bass player from the Wicked Jackals named okay. Oliver and Lex, but they have other obligations, so I'm bringing in two other new guys. So right. it'll it'll sound completely different, probably. You know, right. yeah. Right. Uh, you yeah. know, I'm, I'm interested in, in terms of your. You said you, you know, obviously you're going to play some um, uh, wasp stuff, uh, but the, the track "Animal," um, "Fuck Like a Beast," um, is that usually included in your set? And what do you think of Blackie Lawless not refusing to play that number? Well, it's, it's because of his. Uh, his religious views I heard, you know, and, uh, you know, I, it's why, cause he doesn't fuck like a beast anymore. I don't, you know, what's, he's going to fuck like a priest. He said, I don't know. It's, you know, it's just a song. It's, uh, you know, there's things I think there's, you know, I love playing it. There's things you do when you're young that you pay for when you get older. And I think that's probably a song that he didn't, shouldn't have done. If you yeah. can't do it when you get older, what yeah. the song entitles and sings about, you know, and if you look back at when he used to say, do the song, you know, he used to go, I've just, you know, I, I uh, put a videotape in my bedroom, played it back, made it rhyme, you know, uh, maybe he doesn't think like that anymore. I don't know. I yeah. haven't talked to him for like 20 years of him and I, you know, he, uh, whatever happened between us happened, you know, so. Yeah, yeah, I play it because I, I wrote the music to it, you know. Yeah. Uh, well, interesting. You talk about that song. I mean, did, did the band struggle to get that one released after? I think Capitol Records backed out, didn't they? Did, was it a struggle? Yeah, yeah. They, they were too. They were too much pussies to put it out. Yeah. Little wimps. Yeah, Capitol yeah. Records. They're a bunch of crap anyway. Yeah. You know. But it was music for nations, labels. wasn't it? Pardon? Music for nations put it out eventually. Didn't yeah, it? they put it out. They put it out, you know. Capital yeah. is too scared to put it out, you know. Yeah, because I mean, we used to get we used to get Kerrang magazine over here in the UK. I remember there was a lot of uh, a lot of controversy about that record at the time. But yeah, uh, it was a it was a great song as well. Um, if if you think about it nowadays, it's a big deal. I mean, it's you know, uh, it could be looked at, you know, I fuck like a a a um, beast. It could be an animal. A lot of people take it as a beast, as the devil. Yeah, but yeah. I, I think it was written as an animal. Yeah. You know, it's a beast, that kind of beast. But everybody takes things different, you know. Yeah. But, yeah. Well, compared to what's released these days, it, it's not that it's not that wild really anymore, is it? <laughs> you know? It isn't crap. It's nothing yeah. compared to the crap out day nowadays. Yeah. You know. Well, Difference is a lot of the music that's released these days is actually crap, I think, to be honest with you. But that was actually quite a good tune as well. Yeah, uh, I I had, I had a friend of mine. Uh, from, he lives in France. He's a younger guy. He goes, Chris, uh, let's listen to the new band. So he started putting them on my computer and playing them. And not one of them was good to me. Yeah. It's sad. All these new bands, I, I was like, they suck. I, I, I don't want to say their names. But I was yeah. like, that's horrible. That sucks, and that's not my bag. And they, they scream. Uh, you know, uh, you know. A lot of people hate my voice. They say I can't sing, but at least I'm not doing a some Cookie Monster voice. You know. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. But I don't know. Oh, Gene Simmons says the music industry's uh, rock and roll has been killed by the kind of the music industry that they're they're not investing in bands anymore. 
We're not, we're right. not going to get another Beatles. We're not going to get another Who or bands no. like that anymore. It's all gone. No, you're not going to, you're not going to get any hard rock bands. You know, it's a, you're none. They're just going to be too hard for anybody to get up and go and play. You know, unless okay. they got a lot of money behind them. You know, somebody's rich, you can do it. You know, but if you have like, I don't have any money, so it's really hard for me to get out and tour. You know, yeah. Yeah. I tell you, I just did the Monster Cruise, right? Right. You know the. And it was up. That was possibly the funnest time I've ever had in my life playing. Wow, music. Yeah. Well, I mean, I, you know, I, out I, of, would urge, I would urge people to check out your live gigs. I will. I'll put a link to the live shows just beneath this video. Yeah, it will go out on my channel tomorrow evening. Anyway, you know, so maybe well, some people will check it out. There's there's some people that say I suck, you know, this and that, and they're comparing it to Wasp, but but I don't. I don't play the backing tracks. Oh, yes. I, I, yeah. It's like we suck, you know. I, I'm going to just, I'm going to play rock and music straight, live, no matter what. I don't care. Once I start using backing tracks, I'll quit playing. Yeah. You yeah. know, I'll quit. Yeah. You, it's, that's, it, it's not live. It's not live at that point. It's not live. Once you have a, a track come in. I used to hate when we played Wild Child. Blackie would have to have a, the, you know, in the b breakdown after the solo, he'd have to have these birds chirping and stuff, you know, like huh. the record. I hated it. I hated it because it wasn't live. It wasn't live. There yeah. wasn't a bird on stage doing that, you know. And then we'd play the Who, uh, the real me, and he'd have keyboards and sampling them. And I hated it. I hated when he started sampling. You know, he had those children he sampled. And I just, it's, it's, I'm just against it. Well, I'm he, against it. Yeah, I, I agree. I mean, he makes the argument that, uh, the, uh, you, to get the sound like the record, you need to use these backing tracks. But I always think, you know, some of my favourite bands, when they couldn't reproduce it live, they would just reinterpret the material and play it differently. You know what I mean? It's just, it ever, should be live. Like, you ever seen Deep Purple? Oh, oh God, yeah. I saw the the classic Mark II okay. line of a purple. Well, that's, they never played the song, same song twice in a way, you know? It's always, it's always different. It was, but that's what I liked about live bands, you know? That's it was, it was what I enjoyed about going to see a band. They, they play different. But everybody's got their views of what people, what they want to do on a show, you know? And, um, you know, it's just, I, it's, I don't know. It's, it's this, this June, this year, this year, I'm 65 this year. So oh. I um, it's time to get my retirement but I'm not going to get it. I like to play too much. I'm not going to retire, you know, but um, I mean, I'm still battling. I'm still battling the effects of, I had cancer last year and I'm yeah. still battling the effects of what the radiation's done to me, you know, but I'll get over it. It'll take a while. I can't oh. eat properly. I don't eat properly because my saliva glands, um, the food doesn't go down my throat. Right. You know, right. certain things like rice is really hard to swallow. It's in the steaks hardly, but ground bounds. But anyway, I'm getting over it. You know? Perfect. Yeah. Did you leave uh did you leave the band's sister to join Buster Savage? Uh and uh interestingly, do you think grunge ended the career of Psycho Circus? Psycho Squad, sorry, not Psycho Circus. Well, um okay, say that what about circus circus? The okay, I'll I'll start that again. Did you leave sister to join Buster Savage? And uh, do you I think I, I left Sister because it, it was I didn't understand then I didn't like the way it was ran. Now the reason one big reason was is I grew up in, in Pasadena, right? Okay. Born in fifty eight. Eddie Van Halen was born in like fifty five. Okay. Mm -hmm. I we grew up in the same area. We became friends. Um I saw them go from backyard parties to what they went to, you know. And the camaraderie, con, 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 what's the word? I can't even camaraderie. say Camaraderie, that's right. That's, okay, uh, between the bands, you know, I saw that. And Sister didn't have that. And that's, yeah. I didn't want to be, I didn't want to be in a band like that. I, I, you know, it, was, it wasn't a friend thing. It wasn't, it wasn't love from the heart. Playing, you know, with good friends. And that's why I left. And uh, it's, I didn't understand. I, I, I wish I would have never came back. I wish I'd have never started Wasp. There was other bands that I was asked to play in. Quite, I've auditioned for Ozzy '79. Really? Yeah. And then, um, uh, Quiet Riot said Kevin DeBro told me if Carlos didn't work out, they were going to call me. There's other options I had. You know, I could have done, but um, 
you know, I, 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 at the time, Blackie's voice was, you know, with his voice and the, my guitar sound. Yeah, I knew that that it would work. You know. Yeah, but, I mean, um, the first, the first <laughs> Wasp gig was, uh, I believe, at the Woodstock in '82. Uh, do you remember that yeah. gig? Oh yeah, 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 yeah. I do. Don Costa put a cheese grater on his amp and he rubbed his knuckles on it. it was bleeding all over the place. <laughs> Playing it, you playing his bass out of tune. It really pissed me off, man. About yeah. three songs, I almost killed him after. I didn't yeah. like that. It's like Don, you're you're great as a musician, great player, great entertainer. I love the guy, but I told him if you ever play out of tune with me on stage, I'm gonna chew your cock off right and spit on <laughs> spit on your face on stage, man. Don't you don't do that. You don't yeah, play yeah. out of tune. You shut your bass off, jump around, do what you want, but don't play out of tune. It's yeah. it, and uh. He, it, you know, he and then he 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 had already auditioned. He auditioned for the Aussie gig, but didn't tell anybody in the band. And that just gave him. He quit the band. You know, the next day I told him that. Yeah. You know. Yeah. How but much? Gone. Uh, sorry. Sorry to interrupt. Yeah, that's why Blackie Blackie played ba guitar at first, and then he, that's why when Don was gone, he goes, "We'll bring him back in, Randy, and uh, well, I'll play bass because he, you know, I only told him I'd be in the band for if they didn't have a record deal within six or nine months. I didn't want to do it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I mean, how much of a pain in the ass were the PMRC, the Parents Music Resource Center? How 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 difficult did they make life for you in those early days? Nothing. They, I didn't really notice it. Yeah. It never bothered me. It, you know, it didn't bother me at all. So the record label was the ones that didn't want to put on the the, the thing. That what was cool. Was I think I was watching Channel Two, set the Channel Two News. There's two, four, seven, you know, the big networks. And uh, Chipper Gore held Animal, the album, actually right up on the news. I go, whoa, check this out, man! And I was living at my mom's house at the time. I go, mom, she came in and looked. I go, now that's publicity. Yeah. yeah. Uh, you know, it, it, you know, they're what you're gonna scream about what people say. That's what the America's about, the freedom of speech, right? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so these people can't tell you what to say, you know. Nice. It's freedom of speech. So yes. they them never really bothered me about. There's a bunch of crap. If they want to label the records, you know, what puts um, sexual or drugs or whatever about suicide, label it. You know. Yeah. yeah. I mean, uh, some research I've done. It seems to suggest. Um... Uh, that you were the main man, if you excuse the pun, you were the main man when it comes to the writing and structuring of Love Machine. Um, <laughs> is, is that right? I mean, you, you were the main guy behind that song? Well, you can go back and watch, look up Circus Circus. It has Randy Piper playing it with Blackie right there. And then when, when we're in rehearsals, um, and this was before we had a record deal, uh, you know, Blackie goes, oh, well, I got this song, I want to play it. And he, he played it for me. I go, that sucks. That's just not how I would play it. I don't want, I will not play the song that way. So uh, he gets all huffy duffy. Rehearsal. How would you play it? I go, well, this is how I would do it. You know, I'd, I'd have no guitars to bass. I want to have a guitar come in. Da -da -da -da. Real loud, just puts his energy. That's how you can tell that I wrote it. You know, wrote, but yeah. it's, um, you, you know, I don't even know if my name's on the record on it. I don't think it is. You know, I never watched that stuff in the early days. I always thought that they'd people, I trusted people, you know. Yeah. I trust. Yeah, yeah. But anyway, it's, it's, yeah, yeah, yeah. You can, it's proof. You can see the way it was written before. And then I just came in to the, you know, the Tony had the, he was doing a double bass. Hello, dun dun, V E, dun dun. He it was kind of like his, him and my idea, you know. Yeah. And Animal, too, was Tony's and my idea. Right really? there in rehearsal, right there. Okay. Yeah. Uh, with the um, uh, the track Wild Child was released, uh, Randy Piper quits. Uh, why did he leave, and uh, um, what, what what made him what made him go? Do you think really? Blackie Blackie wanted him out because Blackie wanted to go back to playing guitar. Right. Yeah, he didn't he didn't like playing bass. You know, he's he's I'm. I, who could say he's? I don't, I wouldn't call him a guitar player. A trade. He knows how to play, but I mean, it's nothing special. What he does on stage what he does is you couldn't pull it out of a hundred people you know it's not his voice is very unique yes i mean very 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 unique i will admit that but but as playing he played bass um you know you can go back and look at the videos of him playing bass it's, i i always wanted a bass player with their fingers you know but never got to play with one 
But um, yeah, Johnny Rod came in and he could play. He was a good he was a good player, a good performer, good singer. You know, he was and and that's what Black he, he Black, when the band first started. Black he played guitar. Yeah, he yeah, only he played did. bass till we get a record deal. You know, he didn't so. But, he should have uh, stayed. He should have. He should have kept the lineup with Randy and him and I because the songs and ideas were great. I don't. It's when he changed it. That's what ruined the band. Well, you know what ruined it was the second album. Yeah. Was, yeah. You know the the one the it's the narcissism. The one guy. It's going to be just me, me, me. Well, yeah, it's great. Just have it be you. But that's the way it is. You so know? You, you think kind of Wasp ceased to exist after the first album. Well, the first album was, uh, you know, guys, four guys, you know, working their butts off to make the music do what it does and give it the energy. To, yeah. You know, they got rid of Tony. That was a big mistake. You know, they could have deal with his drug problem. They never even tried. Just threw him out. Um, you know, then it, it was just, it's just, it's um, the narcissism of one guy. You know, he's on all the records. That's what it is. You know, so he, he's he got his own thing. He's got his wasp thing and, you know. Yeah, that's it's the right. problem. That's the problem, that's cool. man. That's that's why you know we toured with Metallica. Yeah, you know, on the first album, first Wasp album, first uh, you know, a Metallica album. You know why they're so big? Because they stuck together as a you know through thick and thin. They there's nobody in that band that's that's a, thinks they're better than anybody else. There's no narcissism. That's and uh, that's what makes bands. You know, uh, they're still you, together you, today. So you, you, know, you think Blackie Lawless in a way destroyed Wasp? Oh yeah. yeah, oh yeah. It's it's just him. That's all he wants it to be. He doesn't want anybody else. You know, yeah. that's the way it is. Why? Why did you? Um, what was the problem with um, Randy Piper's band Animal? Didn't he invite you to play with them? Yeah, I played with them for a while. It's just uh, the way that it was structured and ran. I told them in the beginning, it's just you're not. It's not going to work the way you're structured and ran, and this and that, and uh, you know. Yeah, if by if and it was also, you know, that grunge had come in, yeah, and heavy rock it just wasn't ha kind of happening. It was, it was been really hard to get a record deal and tour at that point. But they they we tried, you know, it just fell apart. You know, yeah. we we brought Tony and it was Tony, Randy, and I yeah. playing, and then um, the Tony the Tony got he he got he had four kids. Right, and when you don't play child support, boy, the government comes after you really bad. Yeah, yeah. So he, yeah, yeah. So that's what happened with, with you know. But I love Tony, man. He's a great guy. You know. How much? Um, how much of your guitar is actually on on, on unholy terror? Unholy terror. I couldn't tell you. I I think I played a solo. Yeah. I don't. I've never even heard the record. Yeah. <laughs> you don't think there's much yeah. on there, maybe. Well, he just put my name on it just so it'd sell. Yeah. You know, yeah. if you listen to Hell Dorado, that's yeah. not the, the rhythm guitar. That's not me. Not, I don't even think the lead guitar is me on any of it. You know, I think Roy Z came in and played Kill Fuck Die. That's not me, me either. Really? No. Well, I've got, I've got a, a question from one of my subscribers, Jamie. He wanted to ask you. Yeah. Uh, uh, about your feelings about that album and how did you feel about the change in musical direction for Kill Fuck? I hated it. I hated it. I hated it. It wasn't rock and roll. It was on, that album was only done because Blackie Lawless was said that Marilyn Manson was stealing his place in rock and he wanted to outdo Marilyn Manson. I mean, listen to the record after that. Hell Dorado's back to rock again. Yeah, yeah. That's only when you know he was trying to outdo Marilyn Manson, do better. And I, I there's it's not a league. It's not a guitar album. What I grew up. What I grew up playing since I was a kid, lead guitar and guitar. It's not a guitar album, so it's 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 a, you know, it's, it's got weird sounds on it and stuff. It's all it's it's it, it. When we played that album, we had to sample everything. You know that everything was sampled. Step used the headphones and played. It was it was you know because the sounds. It's not to me. It's not rock. It's not yeah. rock. You know. Yeah. But I, I I don't I personally don't like the record, but ever there's a lot of people that do. You know, there's a few songs on there, uh, ideas that I wrote, but um, it's it's just, um, you know, put on. There's when you when you sing through a distortion box. Yeah, it's it's not rock and roll. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
you know, it's just stuff like that. You know, I just, just, I, I like to have those children. That's what I wanted to go towards that way. You know? Yeah. Well, you, did you play on that? Cause I, I saw Wasp on the headless children tour. You played yeah. at Hammersmith Odeon London. Yeah. And I remember Blackie Lawless dedicated forever free to all the kids that died in Hillsborough, uh, just a few days, I think shortly before then, I don't know if you remember, it's probably just another show for you, but I remember it. Okay. And what, and, but what, uh, what happened? Uh, well, it's, it was just, it was a great show, you know, the Headless Children was a great yeah. album, I think. Uh, but uh, as I, I just remember Blackie Lawless dedicating the song Forever Free to the, the kids that died at Hillsborough. It was a football event to hear. Oh, 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 yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, well, he, he was going to say that he crashed his motorcycle and his girlfriend died on it. You know, that's just going to make up yeah. some story. And I said, people are going to fact check you and they can figure, you know, find out about if you were ever in a hospital, blah, 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 blah. And the management didn't want him to, sit, to do it. It was, a, and a, a mate, you know, he did, what was that the football match where those people got crushed? Yeah, it was the Liverpool football match. It was, uh, yeah. it must have been about, must have been about 86. I can't remember the exact year, but it was some mid to yeah. late 80s, I think. Right. Terrible. terrible. Yeah. But uh, uh, speaking of Headless Children, I mean, Ken Hensley uh, was brought in to play on that album, uh, I read. Yeah. Um, yeah. How did he get involved? And are you a big Uriah Heap fan? I love Uriah Heap's music. I like the sound of the keyboards. You know, they, they're like, they're, them and Deep Purple were the only two bands, well, Steppenwolf too, but I mean that used keyboards with really grinding nar Marshall sound, you know, guitar yeah. sound. Ken knew that Ken knew how to get that sound with a Leslie and a, a Hammond V3. He knew how to do it. And it, there's some tricks to doing to making the keyboards um and the amp um whether the the amps uh, the ohms aren't the same ohms going to the speaker and makes it distort. He knew how to do it. And uh, it was fun. It was fun rehearsing with the guy. He was good. He was a really good musician. I love being around him. You know, yeah. he was yeah. a nice guy too. Good, good. Um, Scott Ian describes you as the most metal guy in Wasp. Would you agree with him? Uh, uh, I, um, uh, if you knew the band, if you knew the guys really close, uh, you know, he's they've toured with us. Um, yeah, yeah. I guess. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well. Uh, yeah, because the music I play and what I listen to, and yeah, I guess so. Yeah. You know, um, let me tell you something. Frankie Benelli, when he played drums, he was a heavy metal drummer, so he was heavy metal dude too. Yeah, yeah. You know, so I, I, I is is I'm the most metal guy as what is a partier, a guitar <laughs> player. Oh, it you know who knows. Yeah. You know. Uh, another one of my subscribers, Glenn, he asks, so did you consider Motorhead the band to beat? And how did you come to work with Filthy Phil Taylor? Um, I don't consider any band to beat. I mean, I, you know, going and playing. Um, I, you know, we played together with Motorhead. It's Blackie and uh, Lemmy are the ones that got in a big hassle. It wasn't then I have nothing to do with it, you know, but um uh it's uh, i love motorhead you know it's, it's, it's they they when they play live i would listen to them and just pray that wasp didn't sound like that just distortion and you know my i couldn't even under i couldn't hear a thing what was going on but um uh mm -hmm. and I, you know i love the guys in the band i know them great uh i was the first guy that ever hooked up lemmy in la with uh the chemicals you know because I'm right. from Los Angeles and, and birds of a feather flock together. You know what I mean? Absolutely. Um, yeah. And Phil and I became really close friends in that in, after 2003. And we wrote together a lot. And um, he was probably um, even he's probably the coolest guy in rock music that I ever met. Filthy Animal Taylor. I mean, I know I know a lot of people. He was that's probably the coolest guy I've ever met as a, being a warm-hearted person to be around. Always take the time to be friends with anybody, you know. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. He just he, he, nobody lives forever. You know, it's sad that these people are gone. No, we lost him too early. That's for sure. Oh um, yeah. Oh yeah. Uh, Metal Knight asks, um, "What is your favorite Wasp cover song?" Favorite Wasp cover song? Yeah. Easy Living. Okay. 
You were on Heat. Easy one. living. Yeah. 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 You, um, I'm trying to. Uh, we we played Mountain Mississippi Queen, but it's yeah. it's the guitar work wasn't I think sucked compared to what Leslie West does on the record. You know. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, I would like to say you know also I don't need no doctor, but if you put up Humble Pie rocking the Fillmore, and then you yeah. put up Wasp rocking the Fillmore, smokes it. Yeah, yeah, in my in my view, my yeah. opinion, okay, um, it's it's you can't you can't get any harder rock than what they did on I Don't Need No Doctor. You know, uh, Humble Pie did not write that song. No, no, that's right. Ashford and Simpson wrote it, but Humble Pie re rocked. They rocked it, and then Wasp did it. Uh, I I, just, I like the way Humble Pie did it because it's it's um. It's it's um a little bit more dynamic, you know. But um, yeah. easy living is probably the, my favorite, you know. But comparing trying trying to live up to what Humble Pie did on that live album is difficult. It's such a you, great record. You can't. You you can't. It's you know. It's, it's if you put up the Humble Pie one and the Wasp one, I'll take the Humble Pie any day. Well, that yeah, album is it's such a great album, and you have got Deep Purple made in Japan. That's another great live album. But my favorite live album of all time is The Who Live at Leeds. Oh, it just you, have you heard of the retakes of them after they've re, you know the record from the, oh, from the original? Yeah, from the original blew my mind, man. Live at Leeds is one of my favorite albums. It's, yeah. There's 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 not too many albums that have that much energy on them. You even yeah. Made in Japan, kind of, but I I think The Who. Whoa, man. They, they were a powerful band back in the day. Um, oh, yeah. Yeah, that's that's uh, what I used to play to when I was a kid when I was like 16. My guitar, when I was learning to play, I'd have the headphones on and play to that album, that and a Band of Gypsies by yeah. Hendrix. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'd, I'd play to those. You know, I had one ear off, and I'd just hear my guitar with no amp. But, uh, live at least had the, had the energy like no other, man. What was the uh, intro? What was the relationship like between Rick Brody uh, and Blackie in the early days when you were recording that first album? Because uh, in the recent interview, uh, Rick described Blackie as difficult. <laughs> yeah, well, uh, Rick got a suspect deal at A and M to record, and uh, I don't even know what happened to the songs. That that's when I met Richard Carpenter at A and M. Um, that's right. Yeah. Rick came in, and then him and Blackie kind of. Um, had a falling out you know about how they want to do this or produce that and uh yeah but if you ask any producer that's ever come in to work with wasp they'll say the same thing max norman came in um there was a few other guys that um that came in that were that were 86 out you know yeah yeah yeah, yeah. that's it's yeah that's just the way it is it's, it's the way you know it's the way it is yeah uh, I've got one last question for you. Yeah. Um, uh, Jeff Beck or Jimi Hendrix, who was better? Be uh, Hendrix. Really? Hendrix. He's, he's, a, he's an innovator, man. He was, yeah. yeah. It, it's, it's you know, Beck, Beck was good, but the thing is, Hendrix electrified the guitar, man, like no other, you know? Yeah. Absolutely. And you know, that I mean, Jeff, that more... Jeff Beck is... He, Jeff Beck's phenomenal. I mean, I've, I've just watched some stuff he played, and you can't copy the guy. But Hendrix, um, there was nobody like him before, and there's never, never been nobody like. There's been a cop, plenty of copiers. People do him, copy him, but the only guy that's to me that's ever come close to what Hendrix did was Van Halen. Right. You know, he, Van Halen. He, the Hendrix electrified the guitar. Van Halen rocked it, and mm -hmm. uh, and. Uh, Look how many people he's influenced. I mean, it's phenomenal, you know. I'm, I'm, I'm a, I feel honored to, to watch him go from backyard parties to where they went, you know. I mean, I, I, to know him, you know, or to, to have known him when he was alive, you know. Were you ever a big, were you a big fan of uh, Stevie Ray Vaughan back in the day? Um. Yeah. 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 It's um. Yeah, I like. I like it. he plays plays good. He's a good player. He's real smooth, man. Yeah. He's a blues player, but I like the heavier rock stuff. But yeah, I love Stevie Ray Vaughan, man. It's a drag when he's that helicopter crashed, you know. That's right. Yeah, yeah. Almost, almost bummed me out about when Leonard Skinner's 
plane crash happened, I, I sat and cried in my car, you know. Yeah, yeah. That's terrible yeah. as well. Anyway, Chris, it, it's been an absolute yeah. um, pleasure chatting with you. Um, I will uh, urge uh, my subscribers to check out the live dates, which are starting very soon, I believe. And I'll, yeah. I'll put the link just beneath this video. Yeah, I'd like to mention them, but I haven't looked at the paper. I don't. It's my wife does most of that. Um, yeah. but I I'll just want to. I got. I got. I'll find the link and stick it beneath the video. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Okay. Cool. Man. Anyway, thank you so much. You enjoy. You enjoy hey. the rest of your day. Yeah. Thanks for the for this interview. Okay, or doing the thing. All right. My pleasure. My pleasure. Thanks Bye. So much. Bye. Bye. Bye.